Well, time for some at issue analysis on the events of today and if they could impact the 11 weeks still to come. Chantel's in Montreal tonight. Bruce is in Ottawa. Andrew is on his summer break, where we all wish we were, but he'll be back soon. All right, uh, Chantel, you were at uh, Stephen Harper's rally in Montreal tonight. Anything significant about what you saw there? Well, uh, it speaks to the modesty of the uh, expectations of the Conservative Party in Quebec. Uh, I don't think that I have seen a sitting prime minister do a Quebec campaign launch in a room that it is so modest, two to three hundred people. And I'm told that the, the candidates they have selected, about 60 of them, were told midweek to show up uh, for this rally. Uh, rain or shine, election, no election. Uh, and I have to say I was a bit struck by the modest size of the room especially since I've gone to rallies that Thomas Mulcair held with no election on Friday nights of long weekends over the past few months. And the room was always packed with three or four times more people. What do you take away from that, though? I'm not going to take away a lot from the first day uh, showing, except uh, to say that Mr. Harper was here today, possibly because he might not be spending a lot of time in Montreal. Mount Royal is the only riding where the Conservatives say that they realistically have a solid shot at winning the seat. It's not a trendsetter, but it is Pierre Trudeau's old seat. All right, Bruce, uh, Stephen Harper launched today. Um, what do you see in that? What did you, what did you learn there? Well, I thought it was actually kind of a somber launch for a, an election campaign. Uh, this is a government that has spent the last several years talking up its economic record and obviously thought that it was going to be heading into this writ period with uh, good economic growth, balanced budgets or surplus, and a kind of economic wind in their sails. And instead you had the spectacle of a prime minister really saying, look, the economy's okay, uh, we think it's better than some people think, it's not as good as it perhaps could be, but it would be worse under those other folks. Not a terribly uh, strong rallying cry, I think, to start things off. I also noticed that the Prime Minister is placing a very strong bet on the security issue and the idea that Canada is involved in a war with, uh, with uh, ISIS. Uh, it's still not clear to me that absent any important external events that that's going to be as motivating an issue for voters as perhaps Conservative planners had thought that it would be. All right. The two other major leaders, Mulcair and Trudeau, both had their days uh, of watching what they did today. Uh, what impressed you most of either one of those two, Chantel? I thought Justin Trudeau looked positively liberated by the election call, as if finally he is going to be doing this, this battle. He looked happy to be uh, in the campaign, uh, and uh, I thought he got, off, got out of the gate fairly well and did okay by being in Vancouver. By comparison, I thought that Thomas Mulcair, who, as you know, can be a really great performer, looked a bit like he was in a straitjacket uh, during his own uh, opening press conference well, a statement, no questions. Uh, and he didn't look as comfortable as Justin Trudeau, and that tells me that uh, the battle for uh, the opposition uh, alternative is far from over. He looked to me like somebody, this being Tom Mulcair, who was in that sort of front runner position, or at least thinks they are, and not taking any risks or chances, being very, very careful. Bruce? Yeah, it was a very carefully scripted performance by Mr. Mulcair, and I think the decision not to take questions, I know that there are some saying that it was because he had to go to Flora McDonald's funeral. I, I still can't help but think he would have been better off trying to find a minute or two in there to answer some questions because it did stand in contrast to the kind of the loose punching style that uh, brought Thomas Mulcair to the uh, to the forefront of Canadian politics. I also agree with Chantal about Justin Trudeau. I was reminded today that his share of voice when he's in the House of Commons is small and his performance is at times mediocre. But when he's on the hustings, uh, he does quite well. And uh, that, of course, is what uh, propelled him to a lead in the polls uh, only a year ago. And so he's going to be doing more of that and none of the House of Commons for the coming weeks. Well, we, we both know enough from the past not to, uh, to take too much from just day one, that often these day one events are, are forgotten fairly quickly. But uh, knowing that there's 11 weeks still to come and knowing that we shouldn't take too much away from day one, uh, was there a day one winner, if there is such a thing, Chantal? I'm not sure that there is a day one winner. No one would have picked Jack Layton. 
uh, on that same day. But uh, for sure, I think uh, Justin Trudeau achieved more of his goals today than uh, Thomas Mulcair or Stephen Harper, who was going to lose the day to the length of the campaign he decided to have. Bruce? Yeah, if this is more like a baseball season, 180 odd games, so a long road yet to go. But if you said which of the three party leaders would be going home tonight saying, I don't need to do much differently, it would be Justin Trudeau. And the other two might uh, stop and think about whether or not they launched as well as they could. All right. Well, there's going to be lots more of these to come, and uh, a couple not far away this week uh, when we get to the debate. So, Chantel in Montreal, Bruce in Ottawa, thanks to both of you.